To start forging the blade, I shaped the tip. After completing that, I used a paper template I had drawn to trace out the shape of the knife I wanted. I can use this later for reference during the forging. To forge a transition from the blade to the handle, I used the edge of the anvil. After completing the transition, I moved on to forging the bevels. I got the knife forged. So I've got this paper template, and I'm just going to profile the knife right now. I used a sharpie and a drill bit the same thickness as the blade to mark out the center. After finishing the rough grinding on the blade, I touch marked and normalized it. Normalizing softens the blade and prepares it for the quench. With the normalizing cycles completed, I allowed it to cool. Then, I touched it up on the grinder. One of the things I did was flatten and taper the tank. This improves the balance of the blade, and also means there aren't gaps in the handle when I attach scales. The reason I didn't immediately quench the blade after touch marking and normalizing it was because I needed to apply a coat of satanite to the spine in order to produce a hamon. 
I mixed water in with the satanite to make it a usable refractory. Then coated the spine of the blade in a design I wanted. After I allowed the Saint Knight to dry and baked it, I lit the forge and got ready for the quench. For the quench, I purchased some Parks 50, which is a fast quenching oil. That means it'll cool the steel down very quickly. So, I thought now is as good a time as any to talk to you about homos, which is the result of differentially hardening. This is the result of one area of the blade cooling slower than another area, thus it being softer. A few things about the homones is the refractory that is used. When you do a homon, you coat the spine of the blade in a refractory. This is to slow the cooling of the spine. Not many people talk about drying the refractory, which is an essential part. So many times before I had learned how to do a homon, I would coat the blade in a cheap refractory that was not suited for the temperature, and I would not bake it or let it dry the sufficient amount of time. Then I'd stick it in the forge, expecting to get a homon, and the refractory would crumble and fall off. Another thing is the steel. This is another thing I don't see a lot of people cover when talking about homones. Several steels, actually most steels, contain manganese. This is added specifically so steels will cool slower in the quench, making the hardening deeper, which is desirable for things like springs. So when I tried producing homones on leaf spring, it didn't work. But that brings me around to my next point, the oil, the quenchant. If your steel isn't cooling quick enough, then you won't get a homone. So that's just a bit about homones I've learned during the dozens of attempted homones I've done and multiple successes. Immediately after quenching the blade, I tempered it for two hours at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, then moved on to finish the grinding. To start working on the handle, I marked out the places I would drill holes for pins. After drilling the holes, I moved on to polishing the blade. This is important for showing the hamon, which formed during the quench.
To etch the blade and reveal the hamon, I used lemon juice mixed with dish soap. The dish soap to thin out the lemon juice. I also decreased the blade using acetone before etching. To complete the etching, I rubbed the lemon juice across the blade for 15 minutes. After finishing with the lemon juice, I rinsed it off and used some buffing compound on a paper towel to polish the blade. The etch is still pretty faint after this, so I did it one, two, three, four, five, six times. With the blade fully complete, I moved on to the handle. I traced the tang out onto a block of desert ironwood and cut it out. After completing that, I drilled the pinholes into it. and cut it into scales to go on either side of the tang. Before gluing the scales to the sides of the tang, I shaped and polished the tops of the scales, because this can't be done later after the glue up. To help with the glue up, I ground grooves in the scales and the tang of the knife. The epoxy having set, I moved on to shaping the handle. And of course, polishing afterwards.
I coated the handle in a protective oil after finishing buffing it. After finishing with that, I sharpened the knife until it could shave. There you have it, the finished blade. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want a knife like this one, send me a message. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching.